Okay, now here's the Fostex R8 quarter inch eight channel, eight track tape recorder. Now, I've got it on the bench here because I've just bought it and I need to make sure that it works properly and it's ready to go. Now this is really important. This is something that people don't do is to perform a complete clean, a check and an alignment of this machine. Now, I have here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it with a cotton bud. There we go, I'll just find a fresh one. Cotton bud and some alcohol. Now it needs to be 99% pure. Uh, if there's any water in the uh, isopropanol, it'll trash the heads. So this panel here unclips and just lifts off like that, which I'm going to do there. I'm just going to put that on there. there now this reveals the circuit cards down here where we're going to perform our alignment, but it also give, gives better access to the heads and the guides to clean. So I'm just going to get the alcohol, moisten the cotton bud, and I'm just going to clean all the metal parts of this machine. And you can see that there's already stuff on there, already old bits of tape, oxide. We want to get rid of most of the, well, you want to get rid of it all really. Um, so you might need to go through a couple of cotton buds. I'll tell you what, I'm going to do the other guide with this same bud. There we go, just to get that off there. And then use the other side of the cotton bud uh, just to finish that off. There we go. So there's my guides clean. The guides often show up more oxide uh, because the tape rubs against the edge of the guide. You can see that there's a that there are there's a top and a bottom to this guide and this one, but the heads are uh, relatively uh, free of any edges. So now I'm going to do the heads. Now this machine has got two heads. A uh, professional machine's got three, so make, lining up the record side of this is going to be tricky. So first of all the arrays head is this one. I'm just going to clean that. There we go. And then this is the record and playback head. It's a combination. So these heads have eight sections each to deal with the eight separate tracks on your quarter inch tape. There we go. So I'm just going to clean that off. Uh, now I'm going to do these guides here. Now, um, if you raise the right hand uh, spring guide here and press play, sorry, if you raise up this guide here and press rewind or fast forward, the two little metal guides here will come out. There we go. Just makes it a little bit easier just to get at them. The reason these guides come out is it lifts the head, lifts the tape off the heads while you are in fast forward or rewind so that the tape doesn't rub against the heads unnecessarily. There we go. Now, I'm also, while I've got the motor running here, I'm going to clean the capstan and this small piece of metal very finely machined and it drives the tape past the heads and from one reel onto the other so the drive isn't actually the motors here the top main motors it's actually this thing here the capstan which turns at a very constant speed this is the pinch roller here uh, which drags the tape through when it makes contact. There we go. Like that. You can see it revolving. So the capstan and pinch roller need a bit of a clean. Now don't douse the rubber too much in this um, alcoholic uh, um, this alcohol here because you'll actually end up drying out the rubber. Um, so you'll have to try and make sure that there's not much on there before you begin. Now now comes the demagnetizing part. Now I've already demagnetized this machine. Uh, now the reason I'm going to show you this mock without it plugged in is because this is a very strong electromagnet and any electronics including all these cameras, the computer, hard drives, any other tapes that are in the vicinity can be damaged by this. So I'm going to just do a mock version for you. So it's a good idea to have, if the lead of this isn't very long, it's a good idea to have an extension lead at hand because you ideally need to switch the magnetizer on at least three foot from the machine 
using the plug. So you hold the extension lead with one hand and the demagnetizer in the other. And what you do is you switch it on, you bring the demagnetizer slowly with the machine off, slowly up to the metal parts of the machine. And then you just go round to go along the tape machine like this, along the heads, past the capstan, and then making sure that the lead is free, you gradually bring the demagnetizer away from the machine and then switch it off when you're about three or four foot the other side. That's the tape demagnetized. Now, the reason you need to do that is that tape is a magnetic medium and it will, over time, magnetize the heads, which in turn trashes the tape. So there's quite a lot to do here just to get the machine working properly, but it's worth it and I'll demonstrate that later. Now, we need to line up the tape machine. We have this here, the uh, calibration tape, the test tape, uh, which I bought from the US. Uh, with some hefty import charges. Essentially, what, are, what is on this tape are various tones, various test tones that allow you to make sure that the machine is working properly uh, or playing back properly, I should say. The record side is a little bit different. So I'm gonna load this tape on my machine. Notice that it's wound fast forward, if you like, or tail out. Uh, that is the way that tape should be stored, and there's a reason for that. It's all to do with print through. Lots of this stuff can be found quite easily on the internet, Wikipedia, you know, why we do this. I'm just going to give this video demonstration. If I try and talk about everything, we'll be here a week. So, just reel it onto there. That's it, like that. You might need to just give it a couple of winds manually just to make sure that the tape is actually gripping the... The, um, the reel, there we go. So, now I'm gonna press rewind. Go back to the very beginning of this tape. The first tone is going to be one kilohertz, which is in the middle of your auditory range. It's also really mid-range for electronics, audio electronics. So I'm just gonna make sure I don't come off the end of that tape there, just rewind that. A little bit further. Okay, now we're at the one kilohertz test tone uh, point, which is the beginning. I'm going to reset my counter. There we go, because this has got a, a locate zero on it, this machine, which is really useful. It means that you won't go off the end of the tape. Now I'm going to press play, and then you will see on the computer that there are um, various levels showing on my sound card. Now, what I've done is I've lined this up. Um, I've plugged it into my eight channel sound card, which then allows me to uh, see the lev each individual level. Now, I'm just gonna grab a screwdriver, a very small electrical screwdriver will perform perfectly. And I've put it down somewhere stupid. No, I haven't, there it is. So here is a small flat blade screwdriver. If you are gonna be pedantic about this, you would demagnetize this screwdriver as well, because you don't want to magnetize the heads with bringing a screwdriver close to it, and this is in fact demagnetized. Now, if I move this slightly, you will see the holes for all eight channels, the holes to which the screwdriver goes in. We have replay level, replay EQ, which is treble, which we'll do in a minute, then record level and record EQ. And there are a couple of other things uh, here, the erase level and erase, um, adjust, which are slightly more tricky. You have to really have the circuit cards out and you have to get measuring with an oscilloscope, etc. But if you can manage to get this thing working, playback and record to some degree of accuracy, you're pretty much there. So I'm gonna begin with channel one, and I'm gonna tweak the record level control. Here we go. You'll see the levels come up on the computer here. Now you can see the levels, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. They look pretty close to each other. Now, that's a good start. That's not bad. That means this machine has been cleaned probably uh, and looked after, kept in one room, 
etc. But circuits like this and heads wear over time, humidity makes a difference, the temperature of the room makes a difference, the type of tape makes a difference. So I'm going to just tweak the level of channel one and you can see on the computer that that level one will go up and down. There it goes. What do I set this machine to? Well, it's quite arbitrary really. Now, you'll see on here, on the display, if I show you this, when I press play, the meters here will light up. There we go, They're all they all come up to zero dB on this. So, this is a good way of roughly checking that you're getting the right level. There's your zero dB. Now I'm going to go on the computer. I'm going to reset the dB meter. This is just using Logic 7. You can use any um, particular digital audio workstation program with this, as long as you can see the levels clearly. Now, I've got about 5.1 or something. This is minus 5 as well. So if you increase the level, you'll see the, the figure dropping confusingly. 4.9 is my track 2, 5.5 for track 1. Now bear in mind that we are working in fractions of a dB, which is quite a fine control, so don't get too hung up on getting these exactly the same. If there's one that's fairly far out, then yes, adjust it. But actually for my money at the moment, This is not bad. Channel 8 is actually slightly high, so I'm just going to reduce that ever so slightly. Go back to the beginning. Just reset my levels here. That's good enough for me. Now, we're going to fast forward now to the 10 kilohertz tone. Now, 10 kilohertz is where is a very high frequency, and you'll hear it. You should have heard the one kilohertz briefly on there, so you can hear what the tone sounds like. Here is now uh, 10 kilohertz. Now, this time the meters are wandering a little bit because actually 10 kilohertz is a very high frequency, and it's more reliant on this tape transport working properly. So. The second one gives you your what's called replay equalization. And this will set your treble. There you go, channel one going up and down. I would ideally like to see roughly the same levels as I did at one kilohertz. But everything's quite a lot higher here. Now, I would, I, I really, I'm gonna adjust all these down ever so slightly. Now this is probably due to a different tape formulation. Magnetic tape manufacturing involves a huge number of factors and different, uh, different things that uh, determine its frequency characteristic. That's not bad, channel five is a little high. I'm just gonna turn that down a little bit. Not too bad. Notice on the edge tracks of this machine, tracks one and eight, the treble response is quite stable. Now that's unusual uh, because the, the outside tracks are on the fringes of the tape. And if you've got any problems with the guides, you're going to end up with the, the um, treble response dipping and peaking and dipping and peaking and varying a lot. But actually this machine's not bad. see channel 8 is a wandering around a little. So the third tone on this, the next one, is 16 kilohertz, very high frequency. You can't really do anything about about this if it's showing a, um, a, a distinct change in level, but 16 kilohertz is really just fine control over, to, over top end frequency. It's really checking the condition of your tape heads. This machine's much better than I thought it was going to be.
Now lastly, there's a 100 hertz test tone, which is your bass. You can't adjust your bass here. Uh, and the reason for that, most machines don't have a low frequency playback control because the nature of tape heads makes the bass response actually quite bumpy at the bottom there. But it's just for verification, just to make sure that you are in business with your bass. That'll do me. Now, that's your playback side. So I'm now going to fast forward this tape off the machine. Off it comes. Test tape, keep in a safe place, away from any mains, transformers, any uh, nasties like electromagnetic um, current, because you'll end up wiping it otherwise. And that was about 150 quid. Why have I got this? Well, I've got another tape machine as well, a stereo machine, which I'm going to show you as well. Anyway, I'm going to go and get a piece of blank tape now. Now, I'm going to use a piece of tape that is essentially the same formulation as the tape that I'm going to use on this machine in general. It's very important that you set the record side for the tape you're using and try and stick to the same brand of tape. Otherwise, you're going to be in a bit of, bit of uh, deep water with it. 